up in the top left. There it is. Live. You're on, Doug. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Facebook live stream classroom contendants. How are you, everybody? <laughs> hey, happy Thursday morning and uh, welcome to another edition. Pretty exciting, right? Of the 10,000. And uh, I thought about this last night in my sleep because that's when I do some of my best thinking. How many hours have we got in towards this 10,000 yet? Ooh. It's got to be a bunch, right? We have got to be getting smarter after smarter. We're, we got to be, we've got to be some seriously smart real estate agents. So we're so glad you're here. We're excited as always is our energetic broker support team, which you can see. Good morning, gang. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right there. All full of energy. Look at them. Look at them. Hey, so our topic this morning, which is pretty <laughs> exciting is all about communication with your clients. And it was really interesting, and I'm gonna tell a quick story. Uh, we had our first post-COVID, and I'll say it, happy hour last evening here in, in Muskegon. We had agents from Whitehall, we had agents from Holland, we had agents all the way up and down the lakeshore. And a lot of the conversation that came up during that time ironically, was all about communication with their clients. How often do I communicate? What do I say? Um, how, how, does, how does this work? What happens if I'm not prepared to, to kind of walk my client through the next steps? Things like that. And I, I'm always one of those guys that loves to set expectations the first day that I meet a client. If it's in a seller's home, if it's a buyer that comes to my office, I love to start talking day one about how I do business. This is how I operate. And again, we talk about weekly calls. We talk about the process. And I always love to say to agents, remember, you're the doctor. They don't buy and sell very often, but you need to make sure that you're sharing with them the importance of this process and how it works. And, and again, so for me, it's, it's all about making sure that, that that communication is set day one. This is how we're gonna communicate. I'm one of those guys that loves to problem solve. And I know we all are um, to the point that I wanna have answers to people's questions before they ask the question, right? What a nice thing to do. If you're on top of this and your client knows that you are able to field these questions, field these, these things up front and be able to communicate that long before they're ready to ask that question, boy, does that go a long way? And uh, I don't know how the others feel about that. Gang, I'll let you chime in at this point, but I'm kind of one of those guys that loves to set the expectations, share with people how we work, and again, I think that solves a lot in terms of that constant communication through the process. What are your thoughts, anybody? Paul Brooks, Kim Anderson, Tracy <laughs> Johnson, I know you have thoughts. Well, you what know, did you get? for me, I, it's, I think it's two things that when I looked at our topics today was like, for people to communicate during the process and then the communication down the road for future business and stuff like that. Sure. So I, 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 the communication on a daily basis is, is huge. And I think a lot of times to call someone and just say, this is, I'm just checking in. I'm trying to do my job. I, I don't know anything more like what's going on. I have a closing yeah. coming up and, and, and it was, a, it's exactly what just, I called Julie and said, Julie, I said, everything's in process. We're just waiting till September yep. 20th until we close. Everything's yeah. kind of done. Yeah. And we've had a long window of, um, of the closing time. Sure. And so it's kind of been different than let's say if you're on a 30 days or something like this, it's been a while she's moving out to Florida and all this yeah. stuff. But I'm just to check in and go, Hey, I'm thinking about you. Everything's going good so far. Hang in there. And, and so that's, yeah. that's yeah. what I try and do is to tell someone 
I don't know anything, checking in. Yep. I want to do my job. I want to be in touch and do Maybe. I not I and I don't want that person to think I forgot about them that I'm too busy. Yeah. Paul, do you call them? Do you text them? Do you I email them? Every you call I call them because I'm Good. old. Okay. I, yeah. I call on the phone yeah. and say, hey. Because it it it's so um texting back and forth is one thing but it, to, to talk to someone and just say hey how are you doing what's going on and blah 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 because this is their gigantic thing in their yeah. life and yeah. i think for me being in it as long as i have we get desensitized by this is just every day like okay yeah. I'm yeah. but, right but to them yeah. it's like yeah. the world is turned upside down well and we have to be i mean it's all about emotions right it's emotional totally. yeah. and, and it, on the phone you can get you can get the emotion you can get all of that where you might not be able to get that in a text or an email or however we communicate, right? And and I think you have to understand your audience to some degree too, because I, I was talking to, um, I can't think of his name now, at another company, and I call everyone on their birthday. He goes, I would never call anyone on their birthday. I would text them. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that I mean that's kind of the difference of trying to figure that out and and who your audience is for me yeah yeah I, I, I just I, I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna text Doug Hale a happy birthday yeah oh, yeah but it's super so it's super think, it's it's super personal when you're calling me though because I know you're taking the time someone said to me last night well what if I don't have anything to say I said this is what you say there Hello. You go. Yeah. <laughs> See where it yeah. goes. <laughs> See where it goes. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. 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 Tracy, what about you? you? Tracy, yeah. what about you? Well, <clears throat> I, I have a specific, you know, um, pattern that I follow on every transaction, whether it's a buyer or a seller. And next week yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about how to be a good buyer's agent. And so we'll talk about some of those things in detail, but I like to take control of the, the, the transaction right from the get-go, out of the gate. Hey, it's Absolutely. Tracy. Good to meet you. Hey, everybody. This is everybody that's going to be part of this big party we're going to have on the buy side, on the sell side. Here's the title companies. You know, here's a little bit about what's happening in this transaction because each one is different. But I have a document that I send out right from the get-go that says, welcome to the transaction. And it just invites everyone to a party. And I love it. Nice. Um, but it nice. also lets everybody know who are all the people, what are all the pieces and parts that are going to be a part of this transaction. And so we'll go through that a little bit more next week. But but it's about communication. And yep. it starts at the beginning. And the thing I like is I, I pulled these out while we were sitting here talking. And that's these lovely, I can't see them, but the lovely Kim Anderson checklists. Good job, and, Kim Anderson. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. What I like about them is this. You're a new agent. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You've never seen a transaction go from A to Z and yeah. all the pieces and parts in between. But guess what? Kim Anderson has given you a cheat sheet. Yeah. And all you have to do is follow that. So if you're thinking, I think you should be communicating with your client all the time. And what's interesting is that, you know, Paul Brooks is not a, he's like not a fan of texting. You know, I get that. I do text. And sometimes we follow the lead of our client too, right? Some of them are exactly. going to be big texters. Some are not going to be, exactly. I like to chat with people because I'm kind of quiet and shy. Um, yeah, right. But I do, I do text a lot too, because, you know, when you're helping them through the buy process, you've spent so much time together. You're calling, you're texting, Hey, what about this? There's so, and then all of a sudden you're under contract and you're through inspections and it's like crickets. So when you use these checklists, you, they're helping you figure out little pieces of the, the big pie of how to stay in contact with your client. Look for reasons to call them. Think of, hey, I just missed chatting with you. It's been, I feel like we haven't chatted four times a day like we have been. And I just wanted to say hi. And it can be done through a text, a smiley face, a, a quick phone call, however you want. But I think it's an important piece of what we do is it, it's, um, it's our value. Our value is that we didn't forget about you. We're here um, throughout this entire transaction and, um, and you're, you're, you're worth it. And you're letting them know, hey, you matter to me and we're going to see this through. Yeah, 
Boy, I love it. I love it. Kim, how about you? Thank you for those checklists because I'm now adapting those in what I do each day. And boy, does that make the process easier because then you don't forget anything, right? You don't right. forget that you've had this conversation way back when or two weeks ago or two days ago. And so that's 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 been a lifesaver. Good. And I literally print those out two-sided so it's just one piece of paper because I'm a writer. Yeah. But if you like them, they've been formatted and I can share them in the drive with anybody who wants them and you can make a copy and you can edit, delete, change. Um, it, it looks like two pieces of paper, but it's really 20 years of checklists that that I, I used. I developed them when I helped um, a top agent and um, to me, they're, they're priceless. So I stepped out for a second because I went to grab this book as we're talking. So this is an amazing book called Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer. It's an amazing book for any person, but especially new agents. And they have this wonderful pyramid in here about communication. And as we're talking, I'm thinking about how, you know, our whole goal is always to be one-on-one. -on -one. Our best, our most effective communication is when we're one-on-one. -on -one. That's why we do live streams because we're not in person, but we can have more FaceTime with you. I personally do with agents all week long, one-on-one. -on -one. It's the closest I can get to them. But it, it just talks about, this came to mind about how uh, Paul said he doesn't like to text. Tracy likes to pick up the phone. And if you look at phone calls are really high on the, on the chart. And then of course, you know, when we're prospecting events and seminars and we always want to be face-to-face. -face. So this is an excellent recommendation for you to read. And it's been a while since I've read it. So I need to, but it goes, it's called go from relationships to referrals. And wow. so, yeah, so I think it's whether it's we're in a current transaction or if we are done with the tra transaction. For me, my hardest time is after the transaction closes. We're, we're in contact all the time. You're texting me, I'm texting you, I'm keeping you informed. But then we close, then what? Yeah, right, right, right. 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 How do you yeah. stay with people? What do you do? That's always my challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you've earned their business. You've earned their trust. Yes. Everything's exciting. They now own a new home thanks to you. And again, that's where, again, that next level of communication about being able to consistently be in front of them, asking for business. I mean, you feel like you adopt them in some way, right? Mm -hmm. Into your family, into your extended family. <laughs> And, and that's an important piece because, again, I've done that many times. And all of a sudden, a month later, I get a call from them saying, hey, now that my deal's done, now that we're in our new home, can you help my sister? Can you help my cousin? Can you help my neighbor? And so that, that goes a long way. So I'm one of those guys that says, I never stop talking to people. Once you, once you begin that relationship, even after closing, find that system that works for you in terms of being able to say, what are, what are the next steps need to look like? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I gotta say this dog, cause it's funny. Is that, <laughs> you know, when we met and okay. you know what you did? Uh -oh. You were talking to me uh -oh. in a hot Don't. tub in yeah. Chicago. In Chicago, in Chicago. That's what we were That's doing. Right. He is That's talking right. to me going, what are you doing here? What, how, <laughs> I, what, in a hot tub in Chicago. <laughs> All you want to do is relax in a hot tub. You don't want to talk to me. You don't Our want to business. talk to me. Who is this guy, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's so funny how we met. But, it, yeah. but, but you know, I, I think with this topic, it, it, to me, it's like the little things. I was watching the FedEx golf thing this weekend, right? Sure. And, um, and the difference between first and second place was $10 million. First. The guy who won it got 15 million. The second guy got 5 million with one stroke difference. Oh, my word. Oh, my and word. That is what I think real estate is about. And Jack Bowman, my old friend back in the old days, would say, You only win it by one stroke. Mm -hmm. But it is the little things that make the difference. And I think the communication and all the things that we're talking about right now is to me what is the, the, the difference and i think being being newer in the business or whatever i i think you take it for granted but yeah. it means everything yeah, yeah. so well, I, I, it's just crazy to think of that like one stroke 10 yeah. million dollars that's mm -hmm. it yeah 
Well, and that well, could be the difference between getting, you know, a $500,000 listing and not getting one. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, a, it's a great analogy. I mean, it, there's a thin margin between yeah. you and the next guy or gal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I what, what kind of goes through my mind with this constant communication is all about emotions, too. This is an emotional experience when you think about this, right? For us, Paul, you said it best. You kind of get to the point that, I mean, we do this for a living. This is something that just goes on and on and on in our mind. But right. for people that don't do this very often and their emotions are up here or they're down here, I mean, they're all over the board, right? But the more they hear from us, again, very professional, very calm, very focused. When they feel like, hey, Doug's really got this. Paul's really got this. I don't have to worry about this. Mm -hmm. Again, there's this piece about the transaction to me that most people feel like, man, I really feel like I'm being well cared for. And again, Tracy, that goes back to what you just said in terms of value. That's our values. I mean, our that statement speaks for itself. Would you, you agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 without question, without question. And that's why it's important that you take somebody else's system that they've developed, right? Just start using it. And, yeah. and that's why Kim has done what she's done to make this available to you. Follow the system, take, you know, get all the check marks and all the boxes and then find ways to communicate back to your client in the midst of this. Hey, today I was working on your title work. Um, I'm going to be sending that over, um, you know, within the next five to seven days, you know, when I receive it inside of that is going to be this. And then when it comes, hey, here's that title work I told you would be coming. You yep. know, here's the areas you need to pay yep. attention to. And that's the idea. You are going to develop the relationship throughout this entire transaction. And you need to look for ways to communicate with your client along the way so that you continue to build the relationship. And I told my brother, I, I recently sold a house for my brother and my sister. And I always say that uh, my best friends are the people I'm doing real, uh, real estate with at the time, you know, and yes. then I get a new set of friends and then a new set of friends and a new set of friends. And both my brother and sister were like, it's really good to be like hanging out with you. You know, I'm like, well, this is what I do. You know, I'll, I'll have new friends next week. But the idea is this was family, right? But they right, talk right. to me a lot more than they normally do. But how do you stay feeling like family and feeling really important when it's done? And you do that by communicating. And um, so you, you don't try to develop a new system. Take what Kim did. And then after you've used it five, six, eight times, you might go, you know, I need another step in here. Then just yeah. change it. Make it your own. It's easy. Yeah. Just I, tweak it for you. Tweak it for you. That's right. Well, that makes sense. Do you stay in touch after the transaction? Do you, do you just call up randomly if they come to mind? Do you check in once a quarter? Do you just go with your intuition? Do you um, do you have a system? How do you keep in touch with the people? Do you send them the ultimate Christmas card? I mean, what are you doing to keep that relationship going? I watch what different agents do, but I'm just curious um, what some of you do to make that happen. Do you use social media? What are you doing to stay in touch? Well, my favorite thing that I'm doing right now that I, that I stink and love is I had, and maybe I've said this before, but you know, you can't say it enough. So if I did, I apologize, but I had our marketing team develop these really cool cards for me. And I think I have three or four of them and um, they have a happy home anniversary on them. And so I write all of them a, um, a, uh, a note, what, you know, this is your third, fourth, fifth, 10th, whatever anniversary it is. And then I just write a cute note that says, you know, hey, thinking about you, can you believe it's been five years? Um, and then maybe something about an interaction we've had or something that I know that's happening in their life, I make it personal. And then I always include a lottery ticket with a funny little thing at the top, you know, about like winning. And mm -hmm. um, I have gotten more responses. Okay, I get phone calls, I get texts, I get emails like, you you never cease to amaze me. You are unbelievable. I'm like, and it's a dollar lottery ticket, you know, and some have won two or three bucks or whatever, but but I do that. And then I do mums in the fall. I don't do it at Christmas, but anyone that's closed with me in the last two to three years, we have a list, we break it up by areas. We all pick up mums and we deliver them with a handwritten note from, from my team. And we do it then because we feel like Christmas, there's so much, you know, that happens that might get lost, but those are the kind of fun things that I do. I certainly call those things, but 
One is the dollar lottery ticket. Memorable. That's what I'll tell you. And it's thoughtful. It's thoughtful. Yeah. You might think it's only a dollar. They're yeah. thinking, hey, Tracy touched me. She reached right. out again. She, yeah. she values where we're at. I mean, those yeah. are the kind of things. And again, I, I'm probably like you, a lot like you, Tracy. I, I've got a system where, and, and again, we still give wreaths out at Christmas and we still give Christmas cards and things like that. But again, I think the thing that goes a long ways is 30 days after they're in their new home, I'm calling them again. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, hey, now that you're there, how are things? And we're excited. 99.9% .9 of the time, people are like, man, this is the best thing in the world. It worked out so well. I think agents might get a little nervous about, well, gosh, what if I call 30 days down the road and there's something wrong? Or there's something that comes up. Oh, my word, how am I going to handle this, right? Well, this is where you're the agent. You're that person's going to, going to come back into their life and make it right. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah. call 30 days for me is important. Uh, again, the cards and the future. Again, I don't know if I have a real formal process. Paul, Kim, I don't know about you guys. I, I just want to stay with folks moving forward. My wife always loves to say, Doug, they love you and they want to hear from you. So I need to be better at that for sure. Yeah. One example I have is um, one of the agents that Tier Five Star has been in the business for 25 years and she didn't really have a system. <clears throat> and then she partnered up with the team um, as a partner, not as a team member. And because she liked um, the administrative part that they did for her. So they, the admin started sending out a systematic touch and she started hearing from people that she hadn't done business with for years. Wow. So it, it, she just said, people start calling me. People say, we wonder where you were. So I think it's all of the above, right? I think a system is good. I think inspiration is good. I think it's really important to um, stay in touch. And I, and I often, like, I just, I spent a year with my niece helping her sell her home and buy her home. And then she bought one with the pool and that was kind of fun. And then we started to shop a little bit and that was kind of fun. And then <laughs> now where are we, right? Yeah. Like yeah. finding that common ground to, to stay in touch. And I do use social media to comment um, back to school things. And, and sometimes that's a challenge for me. I, I tend to just pick up the phone or pick up, I'll text, I'll text. Cause I don't know where people are and just say, hey friend, I'm thinking about you. I just had a conversation with a friend of mine from 10 years ago last night that reached out on Facebook and said, hey, kiddo, we haven't connected in a long time. So I think people are always happy, you know, to connect. I think the key is, is not staying too long um, because you want them to pick up the next time. Um, but just say, how are you doing? And make it about them. And I, I think it's it's just genuine relationships and genuine connections. Um, I agree, I agree. Yeah. But as you get in the business like Paul or Doug, you've been in a long, long time with the big database, you know, I think, I think it's important to have some systems um, for anniversaries and things so that you are at least touching them three, four times a year. So they, you know, some agents, I had a, an agent um, in my past that she sent just sold postcards to every person in her database always. She said, they are never going to forget that I sell homes. So, uh, you know, yeah. what you thing is every time her whole database, yeah. Yeah. just However you do that, I think it's really important to um, nurture your database, stay in touch. I always think any other agent is one click away, always on the computer. Mm -hmm. One yeah. click away, find that yeah. Zillow, and whether we like it or not, people love Zillow. No yeah. one click away. It, um, I rescued about $18,000 this spring from a, from a click of one of my clients hitting Zillow. Wow. And that offer didn't go through and they called me I, I sold and took their home about six hundred thousand dollars in real estate wow so, yes yeah. and then you know what kept me top of mind is I had sent a state of the market uh end of January and she stuck it on her fridge and <clears throat> I've sold her four homes I talked to her when she buys and sells homes she's yeah. a person so you just you know I'm I'm kind of that sometimes what not to do it's kind of like roll the dice um, but I definitely have to be, thankfully that letter went out and I caught about seven or eight of my past clients this year. So that really helped, helped me. Um, but that's, that's always, uh, the challenge is, is finding the common ground after the sale. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, our new, our, our new CRM with the newsletter, 
I mean, what a great tool, right? Um, I used to pick on, and people will know this name, I used to pick on Jeff Blonick a lot because that newsletter that he started out, this goes back years and years and years, and I used to get that newsletter, and it looked terrible. It looked like he put it in a copier. You couldn't even read parts of it. It was just really not, I mean, I'm looking at this going, people really read this? And mm -hmm. I would get that month after month after month. And then two years later passed and I asked him, I said, is that pretty effective? Do you, do you get a lot of people that kind of call you back as a result of that newsletter? He said, Doug, you had, you'd have no idea how many people would call me back. And I'm, I'm thinking, is he telling me the truth or not? But if we fast forward to 2021, this year, this month, this day, I will tell you that that newsletter is still going out and people are responding like they've never responded. They will never, ever forget that Jeff Blonick sells real estate. Mm -hmm. in the great city of Grand Rapids. And again, it's that consistency, it's staying in touch. And boy, I'll tell you one thing, I've learned a lot through that whole process. So that, I, I still tell that story because it was, it was so fun to see that newsletter how many years ago. And now today, here we are. So yep. uh, good stuff. Good. Well, I just saw that Kim posted the, um, the book, Kim in uh in the notes so if you if you missed it didn't Perfect. have quick time to write down the name of the seven levels of marketing kim dropped it in the notes for us so good 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 well i don't know if anybody else has anything else i know we're uh we're about 30 minutes 31 minutes into this but uh, i just thought i'd uh, just ask if anybody else has any closing thoughts anything we should be sharing with the group well i'll look forward to talking about um specifically how to be a good agent, good buyer's agent next on our next live stream next Wednesday. So we'll yeah, kind yeah. of a little bit of a continuation of what we did today. So thanks, Doug. Hey, I love it. Thanks for having me be involved. This is huge communication, guys. You can never do enough of it, right? So, all right, folks. Well, hey, I'll let everybody go. Have a great week. Good to see everybody. And uh, again, we look forward to Tracy next week. All right, everybody have a good uh, day. All right. All right. Bye, See you, everybody. Thanks Bye. for your time.